In the 1980s, Gerber Systems Corp. developed a file format for providing data to their photo plotters. PCB manufacturers picked up this format because vector photo plotting was very similar to manufacturing printed circuit boards. This format is freely available for use and is known as the Gerber format, or just Gerber. Some board houses, like Osh Park, will let us just send them our KiCad project files, but this isn't always the case. So it's good practice to know how to generate a set of Gerber files to send to a PCB manufacturer, as Gerber files are almost universally accepted. Most often, you'll generate a Gerber file for each layer on your board. For example, you'll have a Gerber for your top copper, then you'll have another Gerber file for your solder mask, and one for your silt screen, and so on. The file showing drill hit locations isn't technically in Gerber format, but it's normally bundled with all your Gerber files anyway. From KiCad, open up your layout file with PCB New. Select File, Plot. At the top of the pop-up window, you'll see the folder location for your files. Click Browse. Make sure you're in your project directory. Make a new folder called Gerber's, select it, and click Select Folder. Click Yes if asked to use a relative path. On the left side, you'll see which layers from our board design we want to turn into Gerber files. If you like to have a good visual checklist, then head to oshpark.com. Scroll down and select See All Docs. Click on KiCad under Design Tool Help. Click on the Guide on Generating and Submitting Gerber's link. Scroll down and you'll see a list of layers that you'll need. It looks like we need the top and bottom silt screen layers, front and back copper, and edge cuts. The in one and in two layers are only needed for four layer boards, which we don't have. It also gives us which options we need to check. I'll put the windows side by side so you can see where I'm getting this information from. To start, make sure the front and back copper layers are checked as well as the front and back silt screen layers. Check front mask, back mask, and edge cuts. The mask layers show where solder mask needs to go, and the edge cuts layer is our board outline with the slot cut out at the top. Make sure plot sheet reference on all layers is unchecked, and make sure that exclude PCB edge layer from other layers is checked. We want the part reference designators to show up on the board, so leave that checked, but we don't want the values to be printed, so uncheck plot footprint values. Osh Park recommends checking use Protel file name extensions, so we'll do that. Click plot and the Gerber files will be generated and saved in the Gerber's folder. This covers all our board layers, but we still need to make a drill hit locations file. Click on Generate Drill File. According to the Osh Park page, it looks like we want to keep inches and decimal format. We'll use PostScript and leave everything else default. Click Drill File to create our drill hit locations file and click Close. Close out of the plot window as well. Feel free to save your PCB layout file again, just in case. We're done with PCB new for now, so you can close that and your browser window. We're actually done with our layout, so we could just send our Gerbers off to Osh Park to be produced. However, it's always a good idea to check your Gerbers to make sure all the layers line up. Lucky for us, KiCad has a tool to do that. Back in the KiCad project manager, select Tools, Run Gerb View. I usually like to look at the drill file first. Select File, Load Excel on Drill File. You should be looking at your project directory, so navigate into the Gerber's folder. If you view all files, you should see that our .drl drill file should be here along with our Gerber files. Select the 555badge.drl file and click Open. You should see a number of circles appear down and to the right from the origin. Zoom in. These are what the through holes and vias will look like on our board. Next, I like to see how the drill hits line up with the board outline. Select File, Load Gerber File. Select the Edge Cuts file and click Open. You should see our badge outline surrounding the drill holes. If any drill holes are outside the board outline, it means something went wrong and you'll likely need to check your layout design and re-export your Gerbers or drill file. Let's take a look at the top layer. Click File, Load Gerber File. Select the front silkscreen file and click Open. Do the same thing for the front mask file, and repeat it once more for the front copper file. 
This is what the top of your board will look like. On the right side, uncheck the three top layers we just added to turn off their visibility. Click to turn on just the top solder mask. You should see colored circles appear over your drill hits. These show the solder mask keepout, meaning solder mask will be applied everywhere except for over your drill holes. Click to turn on the top copper layer. You should see your traces and ground pour appear inside your board outline. Turn off the solder mask layer. The traces should connect the areas around the drill hits. Finally, turn on the silk screen layer, which is known as legend in GURB view. This is what will be drawn on the top of your board. Notice that the part reference designators are shown, which will be helpful for putting parts in their right locations. Turn off the top layers, leaving the drill and board outline layers on. Repeat this process with the bottom layers. Note that the order in which you load them matters. Layers on the top of the list will be drawn on top. So load the back silk screen first, then the back solder mask, and finally load the back copper. Toggle the bottom layers on and off to make sure everything looks like it lines up. You can turn on all the layers if you wish, but I find it's not as helpful as toggling only a few layers at a time. When you're convinced that everything looks good, close out of GURB view. We don't need to save anything. This part can be tricky. If you find errors in GURB view, you'll need to go back to PCB new, fix the errors in your layout, and then regenerate Gerbers using the plot tool. Take your time examining the Gerbers. If you find any errors now, it's way easier to fix them than it is when you have the boards in hand. When you're ready, it's time to order. The first thing we need to do is zip our files. Navigate to your project directory and go to the Gerbers folder. Use whatever zipping program you like to compress and bundle your Gerbers and drill file. I'll name mine 555-badge-v01-gerbers.zip. Navigate to oshpark.com and click on the giant Browse for Files button. Navigate to your project directory and select your .zip file. Click Open. Wait a moment and Oshpark will process the files. Carefully look at the top and bottom renderings of how your board will look. If you see anything that's off, you'll want to go back into KiCad and fix it. Sometimes I find that if a layer isn't there or something looks very wrong, it probably means you don't have your board outline completely closed in. For example, even though this board looks correct, if we zoom in on this corner of the board outline, you'll see that the lines aren't actually connected. If this is the case, you'll need to make sure they are touching, redo your Gerber files, and upload them again to Osh Park. Once you're happy with the way your board looks, enter the board name, like 555-badge-v01, some kind of description, and your email address. You'll need it to get your receipt and to make an account. Click Continue. If you've never used Oshpark before, you'll need to make an account. You'll get a chance to look at the individual layers on your board one more time. Again, I recommend carefully inspecting them here looking for any flaws. It's better to find them now before you submit. When you're ready, click Order. You'll want to keep everything on this page default unless you want to order more boards. Note that you can't order less than three. Click Checkout. On the next page, fill out your shipping address and pick a delivery service. On the final page, choose your preferred payment option and follow whatever instructions are given there to complete your order. You're done. Well, at least with the PCB. Now comes the hardest part. You'll need to wait about two weeks before you get the boards in. In the meantime, we can generate a bill of materials and order the other electronic components that we'll need. We'll do that on the next episode, so stay tuned.